Coming up on Empower with Tristan Camfer Duma. And this is like this is probably gonna be like gems to like a lot of producers. Oh, like I would wake up, sleep, wake up, like wake up, make beats, eat a bit, sleep. Even eating was long, like, and it was so bad because I was twelve. <laughs> so no one told me to shower. I don't know why people think of creativeness as separate from things like entrepreneurship. <laughs> why are you coming to freestyle? <laughs> all right hello 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 welcome back my name is tristan and i'm here to empower you to elevate your lives today charlie bro we got the one and only bro rs he's here live and colored and today he's not only is this conversation going to be so impactful so interesting so (laughs) mind-boggling as usual as usual this episode is also going to be a kind of tutorial kind of like a, a demonstration as to how this guy made some of his most famous beats and actually one of you know the hit songs is out right now yes, you know sir. he's gonna walk us mm-hmm. through how he made that mm-hmm. and so this episode is gonna be packed so without further ado sit back relax enjoy but most importantly take notes bro mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. for the people who don't really know who you are who are looking at you right now like ah, who's this guy that is mm-hmm. the trip yeah. what are you gonna say to them right introduce yourself so um i go by the name of real smart um or rs if you like to call me that some people just call me smart because clearly (laughs) i'm just that guy um people have been calling me smart since i was like 12 and then some people were like i should just make that my name so yeah basically i started producing music that's what i do i produce music i started that when i was 12 um and i've been doing that up till now i'm 19 now so that's seven years i had my first placement when i was like 13 that was with like papi kojo and then i did another song where kelvin boris featured those were like my first two like you can really do this thing right um so then ever since that point i've just been making beats working obviously balancing it with school because i'm still a student um but yeah, that's kind of me. Um, I produce. There was a brief period of my life where I did other things, like I was into photography, and I'm very much into just knowledge in general, just reading widely and knowing stuff. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a rundown of me. For sure, yeah, for sure, kind of for sure, for sure. And <coughs> not only are we going to get into the conversation about how you got started into all of this, I forgot to add... <laughs> The, not really at the end but at some point in this podcast you know <laughs> there may or may not be uh, a time where your boy is gonna hop on the mic and freestyle just there, there may <laughs> or may not you see I, may or may not wait. so let's let's just see how how the podcast goes <laughs> is, are you really buy, are let's you see. buying this let's see do you really think tristan can freestyle let, let's see how hmm. it goes i can't like I, that bro before we even started filming I was freestyling for them right now. Buddy's over here, but he's behind the camera. Like, he knows I don't that. believe it. <laughs> I bet go just the way. What are you talking about? I bet. I bet. All right. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. It's cool. All yeah. Right. Before we even get into all that, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. But, bro, I need to give this guy a shout out because let me tell you something. This guy texted me and he was like, yo, I mess with your stuff. And you see, normally, like, those mm. those comments like i always respond to them i always grateful for people to say those things i was like yeah thank you so much for that and the guy's mm. like no but like truly like i watched the video he's so was talking about let me see what was he talking about he was talking about one of the one i did with um Sewe from jerry he mm. was talking about that. he said we watched that stuff like three four times wow. bro the video is an hour long i was like yo this guy like he's really like learning from this and i was like yo i mess with that and i was going like oh i mess with that and the guy said that that's not the only one that he's rewatched. Like he watches all of them. He started mentioning all my episodes. I'm like, ah, nah, this guy, he's inside. Mm. He's inside. Like, nah, this guy, I mess with him. Really I was just like, nah, Charlie, you definitely, definitely, one day you will come on this show. Definitely. So do, just keep your head up, keep grinding, and Charlie, we're gonna make it happen. So shout out to my boy JB dot Bounce. I think his his username is JB. So yeah, I'm just gonna call him JB. But shout out to you and to anybody else who is messing with the channel, bro. Yeah. Just try yeah. hit me up, bro. I really yeah. appreciate those messages. Like they actually make my day, make my week. I see the impact that this podcast is having, and yeah. it fills me with so much gratitude. So 
now that <laughs> we've got in there <laughs> shout out out the way it's time to get the show started you yes know? sir it's time it's time to start the show huh <sighs> so let's begin with All right. sense <laughs> yeah yeah for those who don't know sense is hmm, sense is the hottest new release he's gas in it he's sense gas in it is <laughs> The song of the summer. He's guessing it. <laughs> Sense is a song that just dropped. Yes, sir. We recorded this today, Saturday. It mm-hmm. dropped yesterday. Yes, sir. And bro, mm-hmm. song, 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 song is, is tough, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I mean, like the the the, the chorus is in my head, like, eh, hey, Charlie, nah, it's, it's yeah, valid, yes, sir. bro. <laughs> serious, serious. Shemi really went crazy on that, bro. <laughs> serious, you know, bro. Walk us through, yeah, how that mm-hmm. even came about the whole song yeah so the whole process of it um i guess it starts with me and shemi shemi is the um writer of the song and the performer of it as well um me and shemi have known each other for a bit so since like maybe three years now we've just been close friends um and she's a really really talented singer um i like to think of myself as a really really talented producer and we're just never really able to link um, and make music consistently because I had school and she had school and our schedules weren't aligned so well, right? So um, about like a month ago, we were like, let's actually just drop everything and do something. Okay. Um, so I have this studio where I work at um, in Abilinkwe, Accra. And so I, I had a, you know, come through, let's actually just vibe any ideas that come to mind let's just put them on paper so she came through she had a little demo that she brought um and i was like okay it's calm like but there was like a really really long way to take it and so she we got down to work she came she recorded the rest was history so basically that happened like maybe two months ago but because of school and stuff we were we were working really intermit intermittently like we didn't get consistent time so I finished the song, finished working on it like Wednesday, and then it drops oh, Friday. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So when we came back on break from a chassis, I had a few things to do at home and stuff. And then I got started working on it like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it was ready. And then she dropped it on Friday. So, oh, Charlie, this is some serious, serious hustle, man. Oh, serious God. hustle. Serious hustle. So, oh, man, right now he's, as you can see, there's a little setup that's going on yes, sir. over here. It's not for anything. He's yes, coming to show us live mm. and colored. Yeah. How the whole beat came about. Yeah. How he created the beat. Everything. Mm-hmm. So y'all just stay tuned and it's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> like right now. It's literally so, gonna happen. It's literally so yeah, gonna so happen. you walk us through. Walk yeah. us through right. how you did what All you right. gotta do. And Tali, y'all just enjoy. <laughs> All right. So um so on my laptop right here, you guys can see I have like my software open. Have you seen? Yeah, yeah, I see, I see it. Yeah, so I use um, Ableton. Um, Ableton is basically what we call a DAW. It's a digital audio workstation. It's basically a software where you can make music. Everything is set up for you, so you have all the resources that you need to make it in your laptop. Um, so let me just give a quick playthrough of the track. This is like the track as it sounded before mixing came into the equation, right? So, hold up. Let me see if I can quickly just play this through. Yeah. And if you can hear, my laptop is literally struggling, like, because the project file is so big. Um, there's, uh, like, so many, so so many layers in there. Like, when you listen to music, especially as a consumer, you don't realize just how detailed music making is. But there was a lot of stuff in there, so my laptop is already like, ah, how am I going to deal with all this? <laughs> but let me just play the outro real quick. Ooh. 
Yeah. Is that her voice? Yeah, that's her voice. That's all her, bro. Charity. That's all her, bro. That's all Shemi. Yeah, so that was that. Um, so let me just, you know, take you through a quick breakdown of what you usually need for sure to make a song. Can you, can you like speak into it? Yeah, like that. So let, let yeah, like that. Uh-huh, All you, right. See his day. And then can you also check like I think like every like ten minutes or something. Just right. Like, just make sure that laptop is awake. So just mess with the touchpad small. So just see if it's there. Yeah, like that that type of stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Shout, shout out to the guy right here, bro. Shout, shout, shout out to buddy, bro. <laughs> Shout <laughs> out to Atrams, bro. Yo, he's, he's shout us out. out to Atrams, <laughs> like literally. <laughs> but anyway, so a quick run through of how you make a track like Sense. Um, you have to start off with drums because that's what leads, that's what drives the track, really. Okay. So in the chorus, this is what the drum sounded like. Um, no, over here, let me play here. So it's nothing too complicated. It's basically just a kick, then a rim. Mm. Yeah. Then some perks, like a shaker, and then some extra rim shots. Then some rolling sounds. Then some extra perks there in the chorus, just to make everything really make sense, right? And then, you know, everything's mixed. So it's going through um, Shadow Hills. Mas- the producers will know what I'm talking about. But yeah, basically going through a bunch of plugins, some compression, some soft clipping to make it really make sense. Right. So so the whole inspiration. So with the, the drums and figuring out the beats, how did that? Mm-hmm. So how did you start? So you started with the which yeah. one? Which one? What was the first one? So like usually my process is kind of erratic. And I don't even remember super detailed. I think for this song, where I started was with the rim, with the drums. Yeah. But the thing is that Shemi had already written down the song when she brought it to me. And she sang it to me. And so, like, oh, okay. the order in which I put it in the computer isn't the order in which the ideas came. Okay. So she had the vocals and she came to the studio. She's like, let's make a song around it. So, I kind of had everything mapped out in my head how I wanted to do it. So the order in which I put it in my computer didn't really matter in the yeah in the end. Okay, for sure. You feel me? So so yeah. if you were to if you were to do something from scratch and you hadn't heard heard mm. sing, how would you go about it? How would I go about it? It kind of is very random. Um, so sometimes I start with drums. It mostly depends on what I'm hearing. And what's the most clear? Um, usually, an underrated skill when you're trying to learn to make music isn't even your technical skill. It's not even your musical skill. It's how detailed are you able to hear music in your head. Because once you have really detailed music in your head and it's really fire, the next thing you have to learn is how to translate your ideas to a computer and sort of put it there. So those are the two main skills you need to learn. So the way I make music is I sort of play it in my head and I try to get it really clear and crisp, but it's not going to be 100%. It's going to be like 80%. And that 80% is going to comprise the main instruments in the song. So maybe the 80% I'm going to hear like most of the drums and then maybe a lead sound and then maybe a bass sound and some extra pads in there. Mm -hmm. Um, So then I really just start based on that. When I put in the drums and I put in the lead sound, then from there I can just vibe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I I start with with what I can hear. What I can hear is unlikely to be complete. Mm. And so once I have that down, I know that from that point on I can just vibe. Okay. So the main difficulty is in just being able to hear stuff in your head in the first place. And translating it down. Yeah, so translating it down is another whole skill. That's it. Seems yeah. like t- this. This is sure like. Okay, you guys can probably see. God willing, you guys can see what's on the screen. <laughs> God willing, because <laughs> they don't know the stress <laughs> we've been through setting hey, it up. They hey. think it's sweet. We started recording this around like 6.50 p.m. I swear. This guy came around like 5, yeah. 5.15. So from that point till now, when yeah. we started recording, we had been setting up. 
and yeah. trying to figure out how they're gonna get this stuff to you. Yeah, it's a lot of work that goes into it's this, bro. Work, so bro. <laughs> let's let's pray work. that you can see what's on his screen. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> right? pray for those who can't see what's on his screen. It's a lot of different different things. I don't even know how to explain it. Yeah, I can just see different things. So what I see is that there's lots of layers. Yeah. And I want to know how did you go about adding those layers, and what made you like think that okay, maybe if I add this, it would be nice. Like it would add to the overall beauty of it. Mm-hmm. Right. So I have this principle, yeah, which I haven't really had to put in words before, but basically, it comes down to allow your brain to come up with great ideas through failure right um the main way i decide in which the the main way i decide which elements to add and which ones not to add is really at this point an intuitive process i'm not doing too much manual thinking but to get here i've had to go through a bunch of really really trash beats (laughs) and like like a lot of beats where you add stuff and it doesn't make sense you play it to your friends and they're like charlie this one we're staying in the hood this this idea (laughs) not making it out we're we're not making it out like throw your laptop away go back go study chemistry because at the end of the day that's Mm. the only thing you can pass that's the only fire you can make is in the chem lab so like (laughs) Go back there. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so you start off there mm. and then you make a mistake and then you do conscious learning. So you, it's not enough to just make beats over and over again and have them suck, right? You have to like go through that conscious process of like, okay, I make it. And then let me actually sit down and identify what I did wrong this time and make it better the next time. And you see that once you do a lot of that manual correction of yourself, your brain starts to pick it up and the ideas just come out good. It's sort of like writing. Like basically, I'm sure you write very different than when you were like nine years old. Oh, yeah. And it's not necessarily because you're thinking any harder. It just comes out better because since you were nine years old, You've been making errors and your teachers have been correcting you, been like, this is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. And now when you think of ideas, they just come out good. Maybe there's some tweaking that needs to be done, but even the base version of the product is going to be better than yeah. the topmost final ver- final version of what you wrote when you were nine years old. For sure. For right. Sure, so it's just that. let yourself make mistakes. Do it a bunch of times. Nowadays, when I'm making sounds, honestly, it's just vibes. Like... <laughs> that's that's the level you want to reach is where you're not doing is like the how do you call twilight zone is that how they call no that's not that's not what it's called hold up no <laughs> it was um oh why well, yeah, in the zone or no yeah the zone but they have a name for it okay it's like when you're in a I the flow state. The flow state. Yeah, yeah, yeah the flow state. Yes, yeah, yes, the yes. flow state. Yes. Yeah, but basically, a lot of the time when I'm making music, I'm able to enter the flow state because I'm not thinking too hard about what I want to do. I just get the idea. And then you and just do it. I just do it, and usually it makes sense. Mm. If it doesn't make sense, one to one to things, I know how to tweak them at this point because I know how to deal with all the mistakes I've made in the past. So if anything comes and it doesn't sound too nice, I can immediately pinpoint, oh, this is where it is. Okay. So then, you know, maybe the frequencies are masking and you have to do some EQ to correct it. Or maybe the sound selection just doesn't make sense and you're mixing genres that don't need to be mixed okay, or something like that. So it's like, yeah. So I'm seeing that like most of the intuition that you've built up over the years has come from you just trying. Failure. Yeah, just exactly. Trying different stuff. Try. Out, and then you just think, like, okay, Try. this works, this doesn't work. Yeah. So I can mix these things together. Yeah. And I guess there's no there's no real other way to Not go about really. growth and doing Actually, everything. I feel like people think there is, but there really isn't any other way because I don't know if it's a Ghana thing. I don't know if it's just a people thing, but I feel like people are really hesitant to experiment, like really, really go crazy with the sounds they choose because i see a lot of like people that's making music um maybe starting out doing it fresh and they want to copy the sound that's out there which is calm like we learn through copying right but 
what you want to do is copy from everywhere and allow yourself to just experiment. Don't like try to make yourself copy from just one place or maybe just copy Afro. Because Rema didn't come up with his new style of Afrobeat just by doing Afro. He started with trap and then he mixed his different influences from Carti, from, uh, you know, them times who was... 2017, who was big at the time in rap, like, I guess, Chippy Red, Tekka, all those people who had, like, the sing rap style. He took all those influences and he mashed it together and he made He Is. He didn't just make Afro Forever. So it's, like, sort of people, I feel like, feel hesitant to let themselves experiment as far as they could be. And that's where you sort of get stuck because you can you can make mistakes over and over again, but if it's in the same lane, you're never learning anything new. So that's that's all I can say, really. Experiment, feel, and feel, and feel, and do the things yeah. you learn. Yeah, exactly. That's, exactly. that's dope. That's dope. Exactly. So going back to the, the beats itself, after you finish putting together the drums and you finish doing all those things, how did you figure out the... the see me, I'm not a technical when it yeah, comes to this. So when I say worry. like the the dun 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 like mm-hmm. I'll say oh the piano or something. Like <laughs> yeah. you have to help me with the explanations and yeah. all these things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. how did you now go about what was the next part in right. adding to the beat? Um all right, so let me just show y'all on the laptop. Uh-huh. Um so once I was done with the drums, I think I moved on to the basses. There's like three basses in the song which you wouldn't realize as a consumer because, you no, know, there's actually like five bases. Oh, wow. Or like six. And so what, what's the other six? What are the different things? Yeah, so it's just, it's a lot of layering. When you're making beats, um, the thing is, one major thing is sound selection is that um, one sound usually doesn't cut it. So it would sound weak. It wouldn't sound like powerful enough to cut through the mix of all the other instruments that's there. So sometimes you want to layer a bunch of them together. And that makes it sound thicker and fuller. So the main bass sound in the chorus is this 808 patch that I made in a plugin we call Serum. Producers would know producers would know this. If you don't produce <laughs> now wow. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> still putting you on game. Now, wow. like, yeah, I yeah, yeah, didn't put you on game. You wait. Carry. You just don't know the game. <laughs> so like Charlie gets into it. But yeah, but basically made it in Serum, had a couple effects on there. Really just beefed it up with distortion and stuff. Then I had this thing we call a re-space, um, which comes in the choruses. So that's what sounds like this. Okay. Right, that sound. And you see, like, it's growing. It's like, mm. yeah, um, because I really like that in my music. I like dynamism. Okay. Because you can't let everything be too stale. So you want to change a bunch of stuff with automation again producers would know what i'm talking about but let stuff be flowing with automation because if you check my project files literally so much is automated like in one track you can have like five automations what's what's an automation for those right so basically an automation is um in music at least with doors is when you let a parameter change over time so say maybe i have a echo right um we have this knob called the dry wet knob and what the dry wet knob is is basically how much of the echo you're going to hear versus the unprocessed signal and so one really basic automation to do is simply to change the value of that dry wet parameter over time so that as maybe the singer sings then you're getting more and more and more echo and like sort of the audience can just it's a nice little touch. It's so, dynamic. So automation just is kind of adds some dynamism to yeah to song. to the song. So it's yeah. like you, maybe if you are starting out, because what I'm picturing in my head, I'm trying to break it down. Mm-hmm. The what automation is. Mm-hmm. So when you are starting with like the beats and I see somebody is singing like they're going ah exactly. then when you get to like that point it just starts that you hear more and more echo more e- and more exactly. echo exactly exactly okay okay yeah. so for those who don't know like yeah. myself I was also trying to yeah. figure out what's going on yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> basically on game. <laughs> but yeah so then I had that Reese patch which is changing a lot and then I had a double bass a double bass is like a it's like the elder brother of the cello if you know like violins violas cellos and then double basses are like the lowest 
you know what like yeah Charlie, i don't know what it's I'd say, <laughs> but <laughs> basically with string instruments you have like violins which are the yeah. most high-pitched string okay instruments um and then you have violas which are a bit lower pitched okay and then cellos which we all know cellos which are a bit lower pitched the big one yeah okay a double bass is even bigger and even bassier L- okay yeah okay so, yeah okay. so that's like the biggest brother the okay double bass. okay so i had that in here and you hear it has a string sound uh, yeah just to add that vibe because the song has a very foreign sort of like middle eastern uh, we're using a lot of those sounds and inspirations right so one i was thinking like how can we put that vibe in there and a double bass is like the best instrument because even though it's a western instrument it's like it's still a lot of the tracks in here are like very digital a lot of synths everything is synth based so we're like why not have something that's like acoustic and it's still going to give the impression of being foreign while not being in a domain that's too strange for me to know how to use like i can't Mm. just use every single middle eastern instrument because i haven't lived there a a really cool one that i know how to use is a double bass because i you know i'm I'm used to that so you listen to this track like listen so after you finished hearing the the initial drum line Mm -hmm. you were like Hmm, this thing needs some bass. Yeah. It needs some bass to add to it. Yeah. So is it like you have a specific like format that you follow that like, okay, I have the bass now. Mm-hmm. I have my drums. Now I have the bass. Now I add this. Now I add this. Now. Or it's just like, it needs this. I feel like it needs this little bit of flavor. I think mm. it needs a little, Is it more of, I think you said in the beginning mm. that's more intuition than actually having yeah. a structure or a format. So there is a structure actually. Okay. But the okay. structure becomes intuition. Okay. Like, I don't know if I'm making sense. Like, sort of when you're writing essays, mm-hmm. the structure is intro body conclusion but at a certain point that structure just you just think in intro body conclusion like right mm-hmm. like when you're starting to write maybe as a child you weren't thinking let me write intro body conclusion but as you write nowadays you're just writing to that structure right For you don't sure. even think about it like you just need an intro body and a conclusion it just sure. becomes intuitive. so same thing with me um even though it's intuitive there is a structure so i usually do drums and then a bass and then lead instruments And then by that point, those are the three main elements that dictate the majority of the song. Like once you hear lead instruments, bass and drums, you kind of know how the song is going to go. The rest is filler. Um, You will hear it, but like it's less important to giving the overall vibe of the song. So that's usually the order I go. Okay. So yeah. So once I have those three important those ones, main ones, then the everything rest. else can just the rest is really, really just trial and error sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And just just a side note, so we'll get back into this right yeah. now. But like, did you study music or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, I guess yeah, to some extent, I did study music. Um, I've I've been playing like piano and keys since I was really young. The story my parents tell me is, like, when I was, like, three, they introduced me to a toy piano, like, just a really toy piano, like, you know. Mm-hmm. And I loved loved it so much, like, I was around it all the time, just making sounds on it. So then they enrolled me with a formal piano teacher when I was, like, five. Did that for a bit um, until I was way older. Did some competitions and stuff. Um, and then it's when I was 12 that I was, like, okay, let me – translate this formal music training in the piano into beat making so yeah. it came from piano yeah it came from piano really so i was playing that in church and school and stuff okay. so that's like the time. foundation of doing everything that has to do with your music right now kind of i mean it's sort of a place you can start from okay like once you have s- somewhere you can learn the rest okay yeah so i so i started with piano and I'm like, okay, I know this decently well enough now, so let me try and build on it with extra knowledge. Okay. So then I went out, learned how to use Ableton and a door. Damn. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> guys, it's, it is happens, bro. This, this, these are some of the things that happen. We are, we are really, you know, we're pushing through. We're going to do this. Yeah, but I was so scared that was this that was my phone because if it was my phone then the thing would have stopped recording. Would have stopped. Yeah, it would have stopped. I was like, hey, don't worry about it. We are continuing. Yeah, don't, 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 worry. don't worry. It's don't worry. it's gonna be edited out. Every, every, it's gonna, I'm 
<laughs> it's, 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 you hear it's all it's all inside see this is a oh, podcast you chilling. hear everything and we're just having you know we're chilling it's calm so, it's yes calm by this the is end of even the day. leading Blue to Prince. the question that i had which was related to getting started like what would you say is the best place to start for somebody who is looking at you and be like i want to also start producing and making my own music right um I'm going to give very general advice because the specifics aren't really that important. Like, the technicalities of, like, learn EQ first or learn reverb first or learn compression first doesn't really matter. The most important thing is sort of, like, um, start with a passion for it, for music in general. Um, Because that's going to dictate your interests. And your interests are what dictate what you learn, right? At the end of the day... Your mastery of music comes down to how much are you able to learn and master. And and what's going to drive you to do that is really just an interest in it. So just fall in love with it, really. Like, get some artists that you want to die for and you really like their sound and their music. And then start start learning, really. So you can go on YouTube. YouTube is a fantastic resource for learning music. Yeah, like, f- for learning how to work in a door really mm. if you want to do other things like maybe learning singing you will probably need a vocal coach for that uh, i mean that's what i learned how to freestyle from youtube uh, yeah, yeah exactly my, literally yeah, YouTube, bro. my freestyling came from youtube as i'm freestyling bro, you know hey yeah yeah don't worry don't worry you hear, you, <laughs> you, hear you, you hear later you hear later i mean i said that don't worry we'll give you snippets i told people thank you yeah i get a full track but right now i'm giving the snippets of my abilities and you know if he's feeling it that you produce my song for me you know he he <laughs> Guys, it's serious. It's, it's very serious. Okay, yeah, you have to be, trust the trust process. Trust for Dumas. It's tr- trust, trust the process. Trust Dumas go pay me in dollars. Tr- <laughs> hey, yeah, Dumas, you go pay in dollars. <laughs> my boy, my boy. Let's let. Uh, no he worry, thinks no I'm worry. joking. What, I'm so dead ass. No, 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 no. You see, you see what hap- What's happening, mm, right? What's mm, happening? Mm. The bars mm. now I'm finna spit. Yeah. That will pay for the track. Hey. So you're telling me you're going to go viral. Bigger than Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Duma D. <laughs> Dumas. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's D let's, on the let's, track. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's, just, let's just, let's just, you know, let's get back into on. the, into let's the, into on. the, yeah, the, the part, you know, the, the podcast. <laughs> yeah, uh, stick, that's to, stuff. stick to what you uh, can uh, do, bro. No, 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 stick, no, no. Yeah, stick to your topic. Okay, don't worry, nah, don't worry. Nah, nah, no, this, this is, this advice, is all advice. friendly, it's all friendly competition. <laughs> nah, it's not competition. Don't worry, don't worry. It's all friendly, what do you call it? Oh, banter. Banter, there you go. Yeah, don't worry. When I drop the tracks. Sure. Do uh, <laughs> my D. Only drop the tracks. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. I, don't worry. Don't come, worry. Don't worry. Come, so, come. bottom line, YouTube is where you can learn. Yeah. That's the biggest resource. Yeah. That's where you can get everything yeah. from. Yeah. Cool, cool, but cool. the really fundamental underpinning of it is love it. Like, actually just love the process of going through learning. Because you're going to be really bad in the beginning. Like, horribly bad. <laughs> And that can be demotivating. Very, yeah. Um, very demotivating. For some people, what helps is that, <laughs> funny enough, mm. I was so bad, I didn't know I was bad. So it kind of gassed me because I thought I was good, but it was really trash. So I didn't recognize <laughs> that I was making absolute <laughs> nonsense. Like, I would show it to friends and they would say like I should... This is keeping me in the hood. But in my <laughs> mind, in you my mind, it out, I was my boy. so fire. In my mind... I'm like, let me show this to Lil Wayne now. Like, yeah, I'm so fire. <laughs> but I really wasn't. Yeah. So so what that helped me to do is just maintain my drive and my passion for it. Cause I thought I was so good. Let me keep let me keep doing this. It helped so, fuel the flame. So you loved it. You loved Love it. it. And that's why and you still love it. I can it. see that there's yeah. still there's still there's still passion there. Yeah. And that's yeah. a message to people who are watching this. Yeah. And you are thinking about maybe I want to do producing, bro. You have to love it. Yeah, you like, have to with any that's even with anything you want to do you have to love it because let me tell you something mm-hmm. if I didn't love sitting here talking to people different people gain that different perspective mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> getting you know, up <laughs> in the morning like bro. getting up in the morning like hey. let me actually set up this you don't know the stress like <laughs> Let hey. me set up the studio hey. for people to come through. This thing, this you don't even know. Oh, man. You don't know the stress that this man oh. had to go through. 
Chinese to set up for us Chinese. to do this. So it's like <laughs> you hmm. have to love what you do. Absolutely. And honestly speaking, and that's what will get you through the 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 hard parts. That will get you through the tough times. And you realize that later on, the more and more you do, it's like I think. Oh, I'm trying to remember what what was said. There. There's this guy. I don't know if you know him. His name is Alex Homuzi. Mm. And basically, this guy is like, bro, the guy is, I think he's 32, 33 right now. Brother, he and his wife, they have a net worth around 250 million. Crazy. Yeah, 250 million straight. We're on. getting there, though. Yeah, amen. Oh, we're getting amen. There, amen. Yeah. amen. And basically, one of the things that he keeps saying in his podcast is like, I don't think it's him, though. I think it's, no, I'm sure it's him. Is either him or Tom Bilu? Mm. Tom Bilu, he runs another podcast. He's one of the people that I look out to in terms of the podcast. It's mm. called Impact Theory. Mm. And basically in that, he was like, is it that him or Alex or Moosey? They're basically saying that it's impossible to do something for so long like, mm-hmm. and not see progress or not mm-hmm. be successful in mm-hmm. it. It's like, it's all a matter of how much you are willing to put into it. How much are you willing to do and not give up on what it is that you want to do? And it's like, either you progress Either, yes, either you progress or you fail. So true. And so it's just a matter of you just staying consistent, staying consistent, staying mm-hmm. consistent, and just continue to just be like, I'm going back and I'm going back and I'm going back and I will see the success. Whether it's you learning something new, seeing mm-hmm. a new breakthrough, whether it's you actually finding that level of success that you, that you wanted or that you envisioned for yourself. And so basically just saying that, bro, you, one, you have to love it. He had to be consistent mm-hmm. because what I see from what he's saying, how long have you been producing? Seven years. Seven years. Mm-hmm, yeah, it's seven been seven years. years since Buddy has been producing. Yeah. And let me tell you, I can't tell me, I, I, I've not heard the guy's story. I've not <laughs> heard everything. But I know <laughs> that those seven years were not all fun. It was seven not all. Seven years was grinding. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Seven years of grinding. You will see it. And the only thing that will get you through is consistency. Mm. Just remembering it's discipline. It comes down to discipline about having a discipline to continue to go back to it, even though that you know that Loki I was producing trash but like I'll continue it will be less trash the next time mm-hmm. and then you start being okay this stuff is good it's even better oh this stuff is valid that's how it is and so that's just a little side note but yeah let's let's get back to the beats let's yeah. get back to this yeah. whole process yeah. because yeah. we've only gotten yes, into sir. the drums and now the bass and the bass right so now that we've gotten the drums and the bass yeah. what comes after so after the drums and the bass, the layout in Ableton is sort of gonna mislead you because that's not how I did it per se. Okay. Um, I arranged it so it looks nice, <laughs> right? Like so, so like it's organized. Okay. Um, but that's not the order in which I did it. After the drums and the basses, it was really just for organization purposes. So I think after that, the main lead instrument after that is maybe these keys over here and that's when i was a flower your father was my life hey, you can't sing cool. oh please huh. oh please what are you oh please me? so that's so that's over here okay yeah so that was the keys there Okay. Um, and then another really instru- interesting instrument which I used was this thing called a didgeridoo. It's from like Australia, and it's a like it's a weird sort of like woodwind instrument. This is how it sounds after I treated it. Yeah, if you can hear what I'm hearing, but what is that? Yeah, <laughs> it's like a really weird sound, but this is how it sounded like without any treatment. <laughs> yo, 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 yeah yo, yo, so that's yo. how it sounded when it started and then after putting like a bunch of effects on it to make it weird and twist it up it sounded like this so yeah. how does that go into the general like song i want to hear that I it's sort of just like a tidbit that you hear in the back if you listen to the song you just hear it it, it literally just happens for like 10 seconds oh wow yeah you, you, know you should second. do you guys should do Go and listen to the song and yeah. see if you can figure out where these elements are in the video. Yes, sir. Once you figure that out, do you know what they should do? They should send it to you. So put put yeah. your Instagram. Take like that yeah. part of the song and be like, yeah. oh, this is where the thing was. If yeah. you want to try that, yeah. this is a little yeah. challenge. If you want to try that, just look through the song, listen to the song and figure out if you can hear these little bits and pieces. You really have to like listen to see listen it because it's close. like, it's under, right? It's like, yeah, it's not, it's not in, it's not like out there. 
yeah you have to like really just listen if you have headphones that's even better because you can like sort of you can still hear focus. the thing yeah you can hear that's tough. yeah you guys should try yeah. this yo but for their instagram what's the what's it um, what's your instagram my instagram is know? rs real smart rs real smart the letters rs and then real smart as my moniker goes for sure know? for sure yeah. for sure for sure for sure do you know i think i think maybe we may have to because when, when you're moving the the microphone back and forth like yeah you see the the feedback that it gets uh-huh so i think maybe i don't know maybe if you, do you mind holding it because you just be time, yeah, yeah so you, you just be like straight like that i think that one will be a little, a little easier yeah. guys these are some of the things that we do oh, it's behind the scenes oh, but it's not behind the scenes it's, Charlie, it's, it's not, not really it's not calm man like that. yeah, yeah. It's, actually stress. <laughs> it's all coming so mm-hmm. now that we finished with the yeah. the what's that instrument called again a didgeridoo Did, didgeridoo I, don't, I feel like i'm butchering the name because Did, it's from australia didgeridoo and, uh, yeah <laughs> so he used a didgeridoo in addition to his <laughs> bass <laughs> drums keys keys so the keys okay so the what's the main the melody how did you get the melody um i play keys like i said okay. so um i i f- i followed the i followed her melody that she did okay so she was, I, I was a flower your water was my love i was a flower your water was my love so i just sort of followed what she did and made a melody around that um if you're looking for what plugin it was it was, it's called Lounge Lizard. Again, producers would know what Lounge Lizard is. People who don't. People who <laughs> don't. Sorry. <laughs> but he's putting you on game, though. Sorry, he's I'm putting you on game. He's still, he's still putting you on game. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah, that was that. And I just played that in. Made sense. So, the next major instrument is the strings. And the strings were actually quite detailed. Because I wanted it to sound really orchestral. I didn't... When you're doing strings on a door... Because I didn't have access to a real live orchestra, it's really hard to make it sound realistic. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even make it sound fully realistic in the song. Like, there was a point I was just like, this is too much work. Let me, <laughs> like, this song is not that deep. Yeah. Right? But I did go, like, a good bit of the pr- way there in just making it sound real. And when you're doing that, the way you have to do it is with, like, basically a lot of layers. Okay. Right. So... If I play the strings out, the strings happen in the choruses. So the strings is here. This is sort of how the strings just sound all together. So you can hear in the violins and you can hear in the strings, there's all sorts of articulations. So they're going, we call that um, staccato. And then when it goes to the, you can hear the, there's a shake in it. It's not, it's, you get me. I need to know your voice. Hey, yo, my boy, you're shaking it, right? But yeah, that's called vibrato, <laughs> and you you sort of have to program all that in. So I I also played I played a bunch of instruments, played put my hands on a bunch of instruments when I was younger, and violin was one of them. So I sort of know how they play. So when you know that, it's really easy. It makes it easier to program because you know what you're doing. So I know at this section, to make the violin sound realistic, a normal violin player would like do a, a legato over here, and then maybe they'd do a tie here. Or maybe they'd have vibrato in this section, or maybe the articulation they're using here is actually a sulpon or something like. Bro, I mentioned so many things. I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, what, what is this? What is this? Bro, this guy is Leonard. <laughs> Leonard in uh, this in this field, tier. bro. But what? Yeah. <laughs> so that's basically the process. It's basically a bunch of layers, and for each of them, you're programming each individual note and the articulation that's on it. So it takes a really long time, just for the strings alone i must have spent like five hours just doing oh, wow. just this small section of strings because so let me play some of the layers that's in there so there's mm-hmm. this violin there's two violins um so this that's a violin this is a viola um and then there's a second viola that's playing a different melody yeah yeah. Dun, dun. Oh, this is fire, bro. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then there is a cello. There is like some celli on the back. So they are even lower than the violas. And then to add body to everything, I used like an unrealistic sounding string patch. But it's like when you layer it on top of the realistic sounding ones, it sort of blends in. So you don't hear that it sounds. But let me play. You hear how it sounds? But I'm sorry, but uh, this sounds <laughs> real to me. Like, is it, am I the only one that like, but this sounds like, <laughs> hey, is, is that my ears? They're not, uh, <laughs> they're not tuned or what? I guess you sort of need the trading. <laughs> I yeah, tune yeah. my ears because me and I hear this thing. It's like, oh, someone is yeah. playing the thing. Maybe you can say maybe it sounds soft. It sounds, uh, 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 how do I say it? Like, you know, well, you get the idea, basically. It's, well, uh, yeah, bro, well. I, I can't lie, but it's not, it sounds like it's, it's real. Uh, yeah. It's fine. I mean, <laughs> Um, well, to each their own shot. <laughs> but um, to the producers that's out there, you would know it's not super real because there's no room sound. Okay, so what? Okay, so yeah, so explain to me what makes this thing not sound S- now real? not real. Mm-hmm. There is no room sound, and it's also it's it's an it's an ensemble. So basically, um, instead of being able to just play one part of the one part of the string section the string section is made into four so like i said the violin the viola the um cello and the double bass instead of just being able to play one i'm playing all of them at once and to a trained ear that's not what is up like you know that that's not what's supposed to happen like because in a real orchestra you have all of the players playing independently but this is i'm using one keyboard to play all the parts at the same time all the notes okay, okay so like that's sort of where it comes from okay and then also it just kind of doesn't sound real like <laughs> i don't know like that, that one, one that one you just have reach. to know that one yeah <laughs> you just kind of have to know that one that's but, wow yeah. wow <laughs> yeah so that's that's basically the strings and when you play all of them together you add a bunch of like mixing plugins on top of that i don't even think i had much on here no i, I turned them off Bro, this episode is so fire. Like, yeah. you know, if you're feeling this episode, yeah. by the way, bro, subscribe. Yo, we are growing this channel. And to the people who text me and tell mm-hmm. me that they watch the show and everything, I love you guys so much. Thank yeah. you guys so, so much for your support. Yeah. It's because of your support that we're able to reach more people and push yeah. the message and empower more people. So, mm-hmm. yo, if you guys are messing what's going on, just press the subscribe button. Yeah. Also, like the video and comment. That helps for the video to reach more and more yes, people. Yeah, yes, bro, sir. it's cool. So, yes, let's, let's get that to the side. You know what I'm saying? Side. Yes, sir. To the side, to the side. Yeah, I'm self <laughs> So, so yes, let, let's get back into there. <laughs> yeah, so then all the strings together sort of sounds like that. Like, so what I played earlier. Um, So that's all the strings. And then after that, I think those are the main... Oh, there was like another string-ish sounding instrument. It's not really strings. It's a choir, really. But it sounds like strings. When, when it's in the context of everything else. Oh, it's not playing. Damn. Okay, there we go. So you hear this in the end. So let me just play it in context. It comes right after the strings. Right here. This is yeah. so crazy, but I'm here. Yeah. You know what this? <laughs> After you are done streaming the little pieces, right? You're when I when the song comes the on, I can now hear the thing inside. Like, yeah, I'm like yeah, 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 people yeah. should try it. So like, as he's putting these things, just go and listen to the song. Yeah, Charlie, yo, show me like, yo, Charlie, yo, yeah, bro. Shami went crazy on the vocal. Yeah, this one, we'll this one, we'll yeah. do a vocal breakdown. This one, yeah. yes, yes, because yeah. bro, yeah, yeah, because there's a lot of vocal layers. Like over here, it's like ten tracks, but in the actual recording, I sort of combine things into one track so okay if i showed you the actual vocal recording project it would be like 40 tracks of vocals oh wow yeah of, for her, just of her just fucking of just, uh, mute, <laughs> <laughs> mute. <laughs> <laughs> cut that out bro because pg-13 <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yes indeed. Yeah. but basically her just riffing her soul out yeah 40 tracks of that not quite that because you can't just riff your whole way through a song because mm. that's not what we came to listen to we came to listen to the song not your riffing <laughs> but it does add a nice interesting element so i'll take you to through the vocal breakdown okay but um yeah so that was all the lead plugins all the lead i should say elements because 
So maybe you don't know what a plugin is, but yeah. That was all the lead instruments. And then in the pads, so the pads are what I was talking about, the filler elements, like the background stuff. Okay, okay. Um, And for the background stuff, there's this thing. Oh, this is really cool. Actually, this is not a background thing like that. There's not really that much background. But there's these two um, samples um, from sample packs. This is from the Saz guitar. Okay, basically, there's this producer called Saz. And he's like a legendary producer. And what he did is he released sounds for producers to commercially use. Oh, W man. Yes. Ew. Yeah, W man's bro. So he <laughs> he 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 released um a a pack of sounds and I used that in the song and I just basically twisted it around and made it really different um, with a bunch of interesting plugins. So this is how they sound. But you know this is giving. What? This is giving crusty crab. Ah! Give me SpongeBob. <laughs> Shemi, are you gonna let this slide? No, no, that. Are you gonna let this slide? Your fellow Oimbo, your fellow light skin, <laughs> is actually dissing you. That's bro, crazy. Bro, no, 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 like nah, it, that's it, no, crazy. no, no, like not, not any or no this is it. But I just had, I just had the do no, 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 and it was, uh, it was sounding like if you play back, if you hear, and just think of SpongeBob. Like hey. just think of SpongeBob. Just think of it. Not like it sounds like SpongeBob. But I'm saying like hey. just that sound alone. Just that instrument or whatever I use, I used to play. I mean, I don't know, but for me, like comparing me to no, SpongeBob, it ain't, it ain't no, it ain't, yeah. it ain't no, no. Listen, I'm just, just you just play back for me, just just play back for me, and, and just watch, just watch. Okay, I kind of see where you're going. <laughs> I kind of see, yeah, I see where you're you going. See that? Like the da 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 da. Yeah, it right. sounds like that's like a bikini sounds bottom, like bro. It's giving me crusty bottom. crab. Exactly, <laughs> that's the vibe that I'm getting, bro. Yeah. So I know I'm not mad when I'm saying this. I know I'm not mad when I'm saying this. It's up to you. It's up to you. Great. But yeah, yeah, so so basically, um, it's from SARS. Um, can I even find the original sample? Is it there? Mm, yeah, let me see. Um, yeah. So I think the original sample. No, I don't have it. I don't have the original sample. Oops. Eh? All right then. If the the Ooh. original sample, but then so. No, nah, I don't yeah. have the I original sample. So I'm seeing all these different, different things. Right now, we are kind of like, we, we are just adding all these different parts. I can't s- like picture how they would sound together. Yeah, it's so that's the skill. Okay. That's the skill. Of, that's the main, one of the major skills that I was talking about okay. when you're making music is how to picture everything together. Okay. Yeah, because when you're making it here, it can be really demotivating. Yes. Because you're not hearing everything in context. Yes. You as the listener have the pleasure of like, you hear the beat and you hear the context and you hear how it came out. But me making it, I don't have anything to go off of except for what's playing in my head. So I have to make sure that what's in my head is HD, like it's clear. And then once I have that, it's really easy to just translate. And this is like, this is probably going to be like gems to like a lot of producers. Because I feel like, especially if you're starting out, I know when I, I was starting out, I was just vibing. Like I didn't really hear stuff in my head like that because I wasn't that good at it yet. I would just put sounds and just randomly just do it and it doesn't end up sounding nice okay because you're sort of doing things very unstructured when you hear it in your head the good thing about the intuition that i was talking about Mm -hmm. is when you hear things in your head your brain has created the structure for you i don't know if that makes sense but your brain has already done like your brain is a magical piece of like biological engineering when you let it do its thing Mm. So your brain has already created the structure for everything if you hear it really clear in HD. That's when when you can hear stuff really clear in HD, that's what makes really, really good songs. You sure, know what I'm saying? For sure, for so sure. yeah, you just have to really get good at that so that when you're making it here, you're not even demotivated. Mm. Yeah. So right now, so right now yeah, I hear all these different things, but you can picture how it fits into the song. Yeah, exactly. So what a lot of artists tell me when they're in the studio with me is like, how like <laughs> that's for me i'm not I'm looking at yeah. you, I'm like but this thing doesn't make any sense yeah. whatsoever. but this guy is just yeah like so, so you take this little piece of it yeah. okay, so you take this what is that australian instruments called again <laughs> you just take this where, where do you even where did i even come from you're thinking about it i'm like I had this little thing inside I'm yeah like, yeah what's the way yeah you wouldn't know but like i hear it before i even start making the song yo so. this is actually like wow yeah. this is so yeah. wow Chaddy. so yeah now that the, I'm sure it's the instrumental 
done? Yeah, it's it's yeah, so almost done. Okay. So the okay. instrumentals are almost done. So that's the main sample that you hear in the beginning. Oh, I can hear it now. That is so crazy. That is so this you hear is so tough. Exactly. I hear it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and then once that's done, um there was this harp instrument that I wanted to use but I didn't even use. Let me just show it to y'all anyway. So it starts in the beginning. But I didn't use it. I ended up taking it out because I was just like, eh. no, it was too busy already. Okay. Because the song is really, f- there's a lot of stuff going on. Mm. And I was just like, ah, it adds extra clutter, so let me not even. Okay. Yeah, so I took it out last minute. Um. Then there is this sitar sound in the second verse. When will you just Over here. So that in context... Dun, 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 dun. You hear it. Yeah. So then that's that's that. And then there's a bunch of effects on it to give it that like very crystalline delay. Um dun, 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 dun. Yeah, all that interesting stuff. It's like effects plugins. I think for this one I used Crystallizer mm-hmm. by Sound Toys. The producers again will know what I'm talking about. And for those who don't know, He's putting you on game. I'm putting you on game. <laughs> yeah. So this is what Crystallizer looks like. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, Do you have a question? Yeah. Do all tracks have to be like this complex? Nah. So no, 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 no. The ones, have you made some that are like very simple? Very simple. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just the vibe. Like, I, my production style is very maximalist, actually. I like putting a lot of stuff. And there's a, 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 there's skill in knowing how to execute maximalism well because the approach when you want to have a really big complicated track is to think of it in big complicated ways and that's not the way you do maximalists um <clears throat> the better approach is to think of parts that sound big but are simple but are big which is it sounds contradic- contradictory because it kind of is but that's really the key to finding balance so something like what it's already say is small but it means a lot like see. like this choir instrument for example um so here in the end you're hearing there's so much movement in it but at the end of the day you don't even hear all that complexity it just sounds like one big instrument it sort of adds to the texture you can hear it quiet in the back can you hear it in the back Yo, this is so yo, bro. Yeah. My, <laughs> this is yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. So the trick is sort of like a choir on its own is not a crazy idea. Okay. Like it's not a, like wow, insane. So the secret isn't just to add randomly insane stuff because that's not what you really. That's not what makes a track sound big or complex. The secret is sort of add something basic but add a lot of body to it. So I took the choir. If I remove all the effects, you see it sounds much tinier. It, oh wait, hold on. If I remove all the effects, um, kind of sounds. Yeah, I can hear it. A bit I can't more hear. basic. Like yeah. it sounds super basic, but you put in effects, and it sounds like it's fighting its way out of the speaker, like. It sounds like yo, it wants yo, to come out. Yo, this guy is good, though. Well, this guy is good. Yeah, so yo. the way you do that is with compression, like really <laughs> tight compression, really fast attack and like, you know, um, quick release. Um, wow. But yeah, that's just, the general concept is just find a simple concept and build on it until it sounds complex. You don't want to approach complexity by adding random details. You just start with a simple idea that sounds big and build on that. But to your original question, your original question was, do I make simple stuff? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I just, I just like, I just like the, I just you like, like the big stuff. For like sure. it, is the, it, sound, it sounds very good. Yeah. Well, this is, wow. 
It's, it's just, I, I, like, I don't even know. I'm just looking at this. I'm like, yeah. hey, <laughs> there's some different levels of thinking and visual. Like, you feel me? Oh, bro, bro. Yeah. See, yeah, you yeah. know something? The music we don't need to do, chair. Uh, bro. Chair. Bro. You see ya. Hey. Yo, right but now, okay, yeah. so you know this. Right now, yeah, you know, almost an hour has passed. Since Crazy. Like, yeah, almost an hour has passed. <laughs> Damn. How much, how, much time have we, how much time have we got? Let's get into the actual conversation. Yeah, one hour, one hour, one hour. You see, let's get into the one actual hour. conversation, bro. <laughs> but I was a bit, I was like, yo, this is crazy. Damn. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, so, okay, before we do that, could you mind just running quickly through the vocals? Yeah, just quickly very, very quickly vocals. through the vocals. So, you um, see what's up. so yeah, I'll just quickly run you guys through all the vocals. So there's a lead. Um, the lead is the main vocal, right? No, and then there's some. And then there's doubles. But the main instrument is the lead, so everything else is sort of quieter. Okay. But it adds again to the bigness of it. Right? Okay, okay. So when you listen to it by itself, you see that they're not complicated ideas. Like, yeah. But when you put all of it together, you really see that that's how you create a big track. It's not just super complex ideas from the get-go. It's a bunch of small ideas that build on each other. And then there's some harmonies. Yeah, and then... Huh. And then there's some more tracks of backings. Um, so... So that's actually my voice in it. Um, Because I was just like... I needed to back with a low layer because obviously she's not a guy. Yeah. Um. So I'm underground, but I still... I don't have that deeper voice, but like it still added a bit more body. Okay. To it. Um. <laughs> yes. I can. Yes. Yeah, and then aside that, there's a couple like effects things going on. So. You so you hear that? Yeah. So this this distorted thing in the back mm. just you know yeah i hear it yeah and then there's this other distorted thing that comes in the chorus you hear that yeah now this guy is bringing stuff down i can't really hear i can't yeah, really hear what is what's going on bro this yeah. is actually so crazy this yeah. is so tough like hey yeah, yeah. Nah, there's a lot that goes into making music Bro. And then there's like there's this reverse reverse reverb. Basically, it's her voice, and I just put like a really long reverb on it, and then reversed it. The producers again, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but if you don't know, <laughs> you put it on game, on game, like <laughs> literally, yeah. <laughs> and then the last <laughs> layer, vocal layer, is this minor telephone thing. I think I've heard I've heard yeah, like that, that. Yeah, you you heard that part. So that's in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, the way you do all these layers is you record your vocals and you put like a stock processing chain on it, and then for each individual layer, you're going to have different effects to make it sound different ways. Because I played all the layers, and you saw even though some are. Shemi's voice they don't sound the same like you can tell yeah. it's been tweaked yeah. and played with so you just do that a bunch and then you have a bunch of big layers obviously I'm skipping steps but uh, yeah. I didn't right now, time, 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 <laughs> time 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 right yeah. now you can't reveal all the sauce yeah. you give me some I of the sauce give, I give you the important bit uh -huh, so yeah so that's the track Wow. Okay. This has just been such a informative eye opening experience. Thank yeah. you for this. Of studio course. session. I <laughs> call it a studio <laughs> session because best, he best. brought us to his studio. If you guys see the whole set, but when this guy came, he brought two big bags. But I was like, nah, this guy is serious. <laughs> this guy is serious, bro. <laughs> Speakers, laptop. Yeah, he brought his audio interface, microphone. Yes, sir. Yeah, Charlie. Yes, right. He him, he him, he yes, him. Sir. Yo, I want to know, first of all, you kind of touched on it in the beginning mm -hmm. about when it all started for right. you. But I want to know if you remember that particular moment when you realize that you know what i want to be a producer i want to produce music right so the the day i got the vin was when i was in cote d'ivoire and um oh basically my family moved there for a bit um, you speak french ish okay. do, you do you understand french what 
un peu. Genre, si je te parle en français, maintenant tu comprends. Oh, oui, je comprends. Ah, ah ouais, c'est je, très je, bien, je, je, savais, je savais pas que tu parles français. Ah, c'est très bien. Je savais autant si tu savais, tu savais comment parler français. Ouais, ah, ouais, bien, bien sûr. <rire> Donc, Allez, ici, <rire> là, on English parle français. People. On va changer vite fait pour, pour vous là qui, qui, ouais, qui, qui, vous, là, qui ah, comprennent ah, français. Genre... Si vous comprenez ce qu'on dit maintenant, ouais. tout est bien. Ouais. Bon, on parle français avec vous. Il y a un gars qui nous regarde maintenant, il sait pas ce qu'on dit. Tous les autres. Si tu, ne, si, si tu ne sais pas comment parler français, tu dégages. Tu dégages. Tu, on, eh, 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 on, tu on, dégages. On, on, on blague. On, on s'en fiche de toi. Non, 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 non. on blague. Non, ça, non, on s'en fiche Il blague, il blague quand il dit ça. C'est une blague. C'est une blague, t'inquiète pas. Let's switch to English. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Nah, that's wild, bro. Yeah. Nah, I didn't know that you spoke French. Yo, you oh, speak French? Oh, just a little bit. Nah. That's why... A drums is in the back. He's bro, like, he guys just looking at us like he ah, doesn't know what's going on. Ah, nah, yeah. that's that's tough. That's But tough. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. Hey, okay. So that was. So I started. So basically, the summer I was supposed to come back to Ghana. Um, I listened to a Drake track. At the time, he was like, "Now whole thing." You know, started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now the whole thing. I listened to that song. I was like, "Hey, I have to get there." Wherever Drake was getting to, and was like, he was getting there. I'm like I gotta get there, mm. um, so that's that track really is just what like I was like, hey, bro, let me do this. That's what started it. Yeah, and so like I I sort of downloaded FL Studio and Sally, FL. Everybody, you have a very serious question, bro. Without without like you know right now ain't no mm -hmm. popo none that mm -hmm. you buy it or you crack it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was what this guy was about to ask. I mean, hey. <laughs> Because mm, you know the people that I spoke to. I mean, hey, you know, bro, they, you know my principal around it yeah, yeah. is like, no one is coming to catch you regardless. <laughs> but look, but look, <laughs> but look. <laughs> 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 no, they think, yeah, you know, you know something. Uh, FL Studio is like, how, how much is it? Bro, it's expensive. Bro. Yeah, FL Studio is expensive, bro. Like, it's like 400, 300. It, dep yeah. it depends what bundle you want to purchase, <laughs> but it can run you a couple hundred dollars. So the thing is. <laughs> When you're starting out, you probably haven't made money from producing. So what you want to do is just, you know, find the back ends. <laughs> do, the what back alleys, do. Do, do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. And just get the software. <laughs> and then once you have the software, then you can just vibe. Like, once you get money, oh, pay for that. Because, like, yeah. there's people that put their back end, their sweat and their energy into this. Because you as a producer, I'm sure you're sitting there, you're like, you want people to pay you for your music. So the people who made the software, you have to give yeah. them some It's as well. Right. So when you make that money... Bro... Go and, really. go and buy it. Go and buy it. Back door is not the only door. Go and buy it. You see? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you start to... So then yeah, so FL once studio. I did that, um, there was a... So I came back to Ghana and I was running this on my own. And then there was a period in time where my parents were like, okay, you want to do this? Sure. We have like one or two people. They didn't really know people like that, but they knew one or two people, friends and relatives that like made music. And so I got took to the studio, and basically the setup was between the years of, like, 12 years old to, like, 15 years old. Every time I had a break, like, from school, like, a vacation, so it could be one month, two months, three months, I would spend, like, two-thirds of the vacation in the studio. And oh, wow. what I mean is not, like, I would literally sleep in the studio, like, or, like, crash at someone's place for like two two and like two thirds of the break and then my and then come back and i credit my parents a lot for giving me that freedom because mm. you're 12 13 you're like why like <laughs> when i think back i'm like yeah, why yo, did my yeah, parents yeah, let yeah, me do that shout out to your parents <laughs> why bro, did they let me i do think that? they saw the vision they saw that yeah. they had something there yeah but like um that studio was funny too because it was just like bare artists in that studio and i was the only producer some like sometimes i'd be the only producer in your how old 12 13 right and oh, there's man. like bare artists in there and it's like there's like five or six people that want to make a track and you're the only producer so hey from when you wake up i mean we would wake we would work late so like say maybe i wake up like 12 in the afternoon from when you wake up you go play beats like hey <laughs> your fingers and your laptop best <laughs> friends like you wake up You play beats for three hours. This nigga's done. Next nigga's coming. Over. You don't have. A, you don't even have a break. So then, play beats another couple hours. And then next person like, comes on. Everybody has to get their track out before the day ends. And then and then and then the day's done. So it's like that's nuts. the period of time where I got to fail so much. Like just make a bunch of re like mid 
bad songs. Just make a bunch and a bunch and a bunch of it. Um, and then when I'd be in school, like when school was in session and I w- couldn't be on VAC, I'd like do what I could and make beats here and there. But really those times were like when I was really, really able to lock in and really refine my craft because you're literally doing it every day. Uh, or like I would wake up, sleep, wake up, like wake up, make beats, eat a bit, sleep. Even eating was long. Like, and it was so bad because I was 12. <laughs> so no one told me to shower. Like, I would go four days without showering because I was just making beats. And no one told me because I was 12. I was just like, I don't even care. Like, hey, yo, but bro, I was <laughs> like, I was like, I w- hey, the scent the was grind, not bro. good. <laughs> the yeah, scent yeah, was yeah, not yeah. good. I can just imagine that studio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but basically, yeah, hot. the studio was like a whole, it was like a, they rented out the room of a whole build, like the top floor of a whole building. So it okay. wasn't just the studio. It was like a. That was in Ghana. Oh, it was no, in Ghana. It was in Ghana. Yeah, it was also. Okay. Um, I I don't want to reveal the name of the studio because you know. Um, but yeah, but it was a bunch of boys and you know all doing music and they rented out the top floor of a building and so, um, it was like a bunch of rooms. So like one st- one room is the studio. One room is like um, they had like a photo, just like what you have here, sort of, mm-hmm. but like was for photos photo studio they had like a whole setup and then there was another guy that was into fashion so he had a whole room where he had like tailors and a bunch of sewing machines and they'd make clothes oh, and wow. then yeah so um, that's how you spent a lot of your time that's why i spent a lot so of you, my time you slept there on some time like on some days no i would sleep there the whole vac <laughs> yeah and then come home so i'd be away from home for like a month or two and then and then come home after that Wow. And that experience just allows you to work with so many people. Yes, I, and I do can so imagine. Much. Like, you were really working. Like, literally every day you're making beats. Getting the experience. Yeah. It's practice, bro. Yeah, it's, it's practice. really just practice. It's practice. It's really just... And hey. so, after that period, after, like, I was 15, 16, I had to lock in because that was when, like, IGCSEs and everything. So, yeah, my parents were like, you shouldn't be doing that. So, you should just focus on, like, school and try to get the exams. So, I did that. For, but I was still working the... Um, getting so where they pay you? Yeah, here and there, like here and there. Sometimes some one k go drop or some two k go drop. Or the biggest check I got at the time was that was when the Ghana city was good. So I was like five hundred dollars, and I was like, wow, oh, wow, wow. Hey, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Little sons, how old are you when you got that? Little, when you got that? Fourteen, fifteen, or something. Charlie, buddy's yeah. making moves. Buddy's making moves. Five hundred dollars in this currency. I mean, yeah. I mean, ugh. at the end of the day, P Prime is out there collecting like thousands so wow. in the yeah, grand yeah. scheme of things i'm not collecting that much yeah, yeah, yeah. but to me it was like wow it's a start it's a start it's a start right so yeah so that's i was doing it for a bit uh and i'm still doing it still on my grind please if you're from sony music or universal <laughs> sign me <laughs> Yo, yo, buddy is tough, yo. I so, beg you. you know, if you have any record labels, any somebody that's Sign looking at the boy, like, yo, this guy has something. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing this for a bit. So, yeah. For um, sure, for sure. It's so, that's the whole vibe. Okay. And then we kept doing that till now. So, that's the whole process, really. I want to know, how would you... I think you kind of hinted at it, but I want to know for sure. Give me one word to describe your style. Hmm. Yeah, pretty maximalist. Like that's, that's what, that's I, what I was thinking. Yeah, I, I, was think, I was thinking, I was thinking that you're gonna say maximal, uh, maximalist. Yeah, 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 for sure, for yeah. sure. I can, I can really. See, but there's a lot in it's my complex, in my it's songs, complex. but there's a method to the madness. There is a method. Let's like say, you don't just get up and just put stuff in there because it's going to sound like trash. So. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. And now I want to go to somebody is looking at you and they are thinking, okay, this guy one. <laughs> This brother spends months in the studio, working, sleeping, doing everything. Me right now, I don't have that luxury. I can't go and sleep in studio. Mm-hmm. Mommy and daddy are saying, no, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Or me cry, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. What can they do? Um, Do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, because it will seem to you like, okay, maybe your parents is like, you know, restrictive. You don't have to do exactly what I did. Mm. But you just need to put yourself in an environment where you're working, like, all the time so you can do that like you can connect to people online like right now the way to go is online really so you can like hit up people just exchange tracks between yourselves you don't necessarily have to sleep in the studio but like um 
do something every day like all the time because that's what's going to make you good i didn't just sit there and just know what to do mm. you know what i'm saying i started off knowing nothing really especially with beat making and then you just get better with time i still like funny enough i don't feel like a musician really yeah because the way i think about it it doesn't even feel organic to me like i didn't get up knowing this okay yeah like there are some people who like seem like they've had the music thing down since they were like three and me i started when i was like 12 there and i was doing it for a bit but it was really just through trial and error so i didn't so like loki i still feel hesitant when people are like are you a musician like, i'm i make me i make beats and i like produce and stuff but like i haven't always had this figured out it's really just trial and error bro you know yeah it sort of feels like I'm not really that guy, but look, I'm that guy. <laughs> obviously, I learned it, and now yeah, I'm doing now it. you're doing it. But it's like I wasn't that good from the start. But ciao. But I forgot to even say, yo. First of all, shout out to Steen and shout out to Sewe. Shout out Steen and Sewe, bro. Because first of all, I would not even be sitting here if not for first shout of all Steen's Steen introduction. Sewe. Because what happened was, I'm sorry for going off topic, yeah. but I just remembered that I was on TikTok. I was going through my for you page and I saw some guy. <laughs> I was just scrolling. I just saw this brother and he was talking. I was like, "He's a Ghanaian, yeah." But his thing is looking professional and the yeah, edits see, and things. You and it was even crazier. The brother who filmed that thing and did you edit it too? Everything. Trumps. He's sitting right here at too. Trumps are sitting I didn't right even here. know that he was here. Like he's, he's the guy who did it. But I was just like, "Yo!" And immediately I saw that video. I was like, "Charlie, yo, Steen, Steen, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. Take, talk to the guy for yes, me. Sir. Ask him. Just, just, just link the two of us so that I can see if he's in Ghana. We can work together. Yes, sir. Bro, Steen did that like this. Like yes, when sir. I tell you, like it was quick. The guy go at me like, "Oh yeah, he's Steen, down, he's bro. Down, he's like Steen, eh? straight up, bro, straight up. So, bro, <laughs> thank you, Charlie. It's because of you that this type of stuff it's is coming love. out. And so, eh, bro, it's bro, love. added." On top, like yeah, Charlie. Yeah, you for come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He added more pressure. You yeah. know, I, I saw you to uh, TYC first. Yeah, that was the first time I ever saw you. Yeah. I can't lie, at first I was like, you and and you look familiar. Look familiar, I was like, yeah. Ah. <laughs> mentioned it was like, oh, <laughs> that's, where, yeah. that's where it's from. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So now that we've covered the past, and Charlie, right now we are very, bro, we are we have really gone over. Oh, damn. <laughs> but yo. Let's just go. So be not editing. Say you want to do. Charlie, Charlie, so Charlie, if you Charlie, edit, Charlie, Charlie, yo, bro, yo, this thing is gonna be a, a big, a big video. But I think it's gonna be a very good video, mm. very, very good one. Mm. So now that we've covered the past, we've covered how you kind of got to this point mm. that you're at right now. I want to know what's next for you. Um. So right now, there's a lot of things I'm building at the same time. Um. Now I'm s- trying to move into the music business rather than just the creative side of things. Um, so I'm starting a label first thing with um, a couple of the people that I know. Um, there's me, there's Arnold, there's Big Moon, there's like a bunch of other people on the team. Stylists like Jackson. Styli- Jackson got me right. Jackson. Shout got out me to right. bro. Shout out to bro. Yeah, but like um, there's people on the team. There's marketers and everything, and we're putting together the team to really make the label happen. So. Um, I'm the producer on the label, and then there's um, Big Moon, who's the artist on the label. You can go check him out. It's literally just Big and Moon. Um, I've produced all of his tracks so far, and we're really just pushing it. There's other things I'm trying to build. Um, can't really go into too much details with those ones, because um, you sort of have to work things out before you, before you know the public. Like, yeah. Yeah. But like, um, in terms of like um, talent management and artist development, that's sort of where my interests are lying right now. But yeah. For sure, for sure. Basically. And I already told this guy, yo, Chai Wu yeah. baby, if you're watching this, eh, I've already told the guy I've I've bro, mm-hmm. I've been talking a lot, bro. I've been really hyping you. Mm-hmm. So when you are coming to Ashesi. Ooh. Hey. Let's get it. Bruh. Let's bruh. It, bro. You have to show him. Let's you work. have to show him. Let's so yes, I don't know if, if the guy reaches to this point and sees the video, yeah, he go feel. But yeah. yes, he he does he actually bro the guy didn't I tell you that this guy is like on another level. When right. I say like what happened was when I first got this podcast equipment, right? He was he was at my house, he was staying with me. And when we first unboxed the thing and we were looking, we were just playing around, playing around. This guy just went to YouTube. He was just like, okay, let me just pick some random beats. He picked the beats. Then he imported it onto Bandlab. He literally just broke, just opened Bandlab, just put it there. He was like, okay, relax. Let me just try something. They started humming the beats. It was freestyling the thing. It was freestyling, freestyling the thing. Bro, I'll show you the video after, bro. The thing is tough. Hey, the thing is tough. The only thing is that 
he can't he can't really release that song because the beat is not for right him. yeah so that's why i said that guy just needs, yeah, a, just needs a producer to to really help Let's and push in. it yeah bro that's lucky hey. bro you know it's funny he did a song with steam too steam produced one of his songs oh. yeah, yeah, yeah he did he did one of, he did a song with steam that one too oh. it happened the next room over <laughs> it happened here yeah, yeah steam steam brought the setup and you're saying he did a thing over here too Crazy. yeah bro <laughs> that's how it is so it's it's Ghana, it's serious it's serious it's serious, serious. so but yeah going back to you and your whole story all right i think the message is clear as to what it is you tell somebody who's looking to get started right but i want to know what has been your biggest challenge that you've had to overcome mindset really yeah because when you start a creative endeavor there's a lot of prevailing mindsets about how the creative process is supposed to be that are very limiting in nature right so one of them a key example is that the creative process is supposed to be like separate from business or from you know selling and i feel like it's a very fundamental flaw because at the end of the day you want to be if you want to be a visionary like a kendrick or a cole they didn't get there just by making music there's whole teams and labels and million dollar industries that are behind them pushing them and so you have to learn how to market the product that you want to change the world if you want to change i don't know why people think of creativeness as separate from things like entrepreneurship because you really are a creative entrepreneur if you're starting out you see it you see music making like this pure natural process shouldn't be interfered with by commercial you're selling a product at the end of the day it's a really organic and natural product that you made out of inspiration but it's a product nonetheless so you have to know how to market it you have to know how to push it to the world you have to know the business and the industry behind it what kind of deals and contracts is behind how you're gonna get you know the the connects and the resources behind you to push this product so that's one self-limiting belief another one is like not even thinking that you can be a chart topping musician like people start something and don't try to think of being a hundred like people start and want to remain at like five mm. but it's like forget seven eight nine ten we're going to a hundred a thousand a billy bro so it's like that's another thing but basically the, ma- the major challenge is just mindset sort overcoming of like it. overcoming these mindset and how did you changes. overcome it being around people like um you have to have mentors okay it's a hard thing to have because if you're not born with a family or born with influential people in your life that can sort of tell you the way it's hard to know these people but that's where the skill of networking comes into play you can literally just code contact people just like bro yeah that's bro. very like you d- i did that a lot um especially when i was um you know years back just trying to connect with people and network just message anyone and maybe out of 100 like five will reply and they'll be willing to drop some gems so yeah that's how you do it and then maybe those five people maybe one is like come to my studio and then when you come to their studio they'll like just talk and they'll like put you on so much game and you're like wow there's so much i'm learning <coughs> but what yeah. would you i don't know not what would you how would you want listeners to feel like when they listen to your music feel like how i felt when i was making it um what i try to do when i'm making songs is imbue it with as much of the energy that was in me when i was making it the reason that a lot of my a lot of my tracks are very maximalist is because i'm a very energetic person like i if you gave me the chance i'll be jumping on your ceiling <laughs> yeah um but like so that's the energy that comes out so that's why it's so maximalist because there's so much energy in me i'm just like let me fit it into a bunch of elements but other times when i'm not feeling so energetic feeling more somber then like a karma beat is in is in is in action right or if i'm feeling like other emotions like you know love heartbreak you know friendship companionship mm. all those things you just try to imbue it into the song so really what i wanted to feel is like 
how you what feel. I was feeling when I was making the song. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah. That's a very, very good message. Yeah. Well, right now, let me tell you something. I want to continue this conversation so much. We can't. I w- yeah, yeah, like I want to I want to continue <laughs> this conversation so much because right now, like we're getting to the 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 like the hey, yeah, Charlie, the I get like bro, but we have <laughs> we are not even done with the things that we will say we want to do here. Yeah. And so <laughs> you are coming to freestyle. <laughs> Let me load. Let me load up some beats. <laughs> so, so, so listen. So listen. So listen. So listen. Before, before I even begin, right? Before I begin, let me even remove this thing. So listen. So before, before I even begin, whatever it is, I, I said I'm gonna do. I'm here for your I bible. said, I said, I said I'm going to freestyle. Mm. I said I'll do that. Just, just, we're just gonna do nothing too crazy. Mm. I'm not going to come here and come and spit some crazy bars. So don't go and replay and try and listen and try and interpret what I said. I'm not saying anything. Mm. Just a disclaimer. I'm just flowing i just vibing and i come mm. to show this brother that <laughs> yo kid can spit <laughs> you yes, know what sir, i'm saying yes, sir. so yeah yes, we, sir. we are seeing i don't know how this is gonna how this is gonna work yes, hopefully sir. it works the the right way but if it doesn't work i'm sorry you missed out on the beat sorry bro <laughs> sorry so let's, let's hey charlie i can't flop let's play <laughs> hey charlie this one they high expectations so <laughs> the whole audience is gonna watch and if he if he's doo Call him names. <laughs> Call him names in the comments. Like, be like, you're really trash. <laughs> you deserve that. Constructive criticism. Good. Like, yeah. if you want to, like, you know, tell me that, like, you, you can maybe, like, a punch. Maybe you can't. Do, just keep in mind, I've not written anything. I've not put anything. I'm t- I don't even know what I'm coming to say. I'm just going to listen to the beats and I'm just going to have fun. I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to do what I want to do. But at the end of the day, that's what we got to do. It's nothing too serious. It's just having fun. Okay. Those are the disclaimers. So if you know that child, you know the feel. I'm sorry, but you go. You you still, to, yeah, you yeah, bro. Step out. We doing, we doing it, we doing it, we doing it. Ah! Mm. I told you people. I told you people that. Thank you. They'll get. They'll get. They'll get. Uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> a song. Hey. It's, mm. it's looking like it's a sign from God. It's looking <laughs> like it's looking like it's a sign from God with that huh. that maybe maybe maybe. Uh, never go, mind. Go. Never mind. Okay, mm. so. Mm-hmm. We gotta do this. We gotta do this. We gotta do this. Okay, so wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on. yeah. So you hear, you hear this. They will hear it. it's like. Yeah, they will hear it from the speakers, I guess. From the speakers. Yeah, okay, so you know, what I think we can do. Maybe you can bring the microphone a little bit closer to, to the, the speaker. Uh huh. Right, so if right. it's playing, then you do that. All right. You understand? Right, no, yeah. Okay, for mm. sure. So the first beat. Guys, I'm not going to rap. I won't rap for long. No, nah, because nah, it's not connected. No, nah, so it's, it's cool. not this this mic. No, no, don't worry. Then yeah, it's okay. It's cool. Yeah. So yeah, I think probably have to bring that one a little bit closer. But you guys see it too. You All can right, get, let's you go. Get. <laughs> oh, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. All right. Do my D on the track. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Ah. Uh, Alright, okay now. Okay, okay, okay now. Alright, so listen, this is what happened. I was just here and I'm sitting in the pockets, and you know the bars that I be spitting. It's the stuff I say, you know I don't play. I'm sitting with my boy RS and he changing the game. It's the stuff that we gon' say. My homie, I am game. I'm pulling from the logo and I'm shooting like I'm Dame. Boy, I do not play. We do not play. I'm sitting on the podcast today. We gonna rain. I mean, what? I don't know just what I said. I'm having so much fun. I don't care just what I said. I be rolling with the ones. We rolling with the twos. I do whatever I want. I don't care about you. I'm having all my fun. You bop into the beat. I told you, yeah, my homie. I can rap. Just look at me. Just feel that what I say. <laughs> know that I don't play. Feeling on that beat, my homie. You know I got game. No, I'm crazy. Do I did, do I did, do I did. I told him, I told him, I told him, I told him, I told him. I just, I just told him. Listen, 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 listen. Just, just a disclaimer. I promise you, I promise you, yeah, I promise you, this was not written. I was so like thinking, and I'm not even in my bag fully, bro. I'm just like, you know, giving a little little taste of like what to expect type stuff. On a more serious note, bro, give me to 10K. I'm telling you, we're dropping a track. Mm. Subscribe, we're dropping a track. Let let, let me tell you something. Let let me really tell you something because. Asaka Dumadi. No no cap. 
No, no cap. Yeah. But I can't lie. I, 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 I ain't gonna cap. I need a, I need, a, I need a name like a proper like. You oh, know, sorry, yeah. so I don't, I don't got no. I just put my name like Fine Tristan. Just put like Tristan. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you can do that. Type if you like. You can't. <laughs> nah, you can't do a mysterious vibe, bro. Bro, do you're not. You know, you need. You need like a lot of aura. You're kind of in aura depth. So like. Don't say I don't got no. You don't. I bet. I I'm bet. Sorry, I bet. I bet. I bet. You see, right now, listen. I'm gonna tell you something right now. If we're gonna do this after we're done recording because it's too. I can't put too much fire in this podcast. But after that, I'm recording. Don't worry, just give me. I'm. Um, don't next worry beat, about next it. Beat. No, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's just, let's just. I just give him a taste. <laughs> I can't, I can't give them too much. It's, just, it's a taste. It's, yes, a, it's a taste of yes, the beat. Sir. If you guys want to hear more, mm. <laughs> subscribe mm. to the channel mm. and put in the comments that yo, Tristan, I ain't gonna count you fired. Like you fired, you, <laughs> you fired. got it. So, so right now, so can, can I freestyle? Oh yeah, don't worry. I can, I can freestyle. So all the smack that was being talked before in the beginning. I of the mean, day. I mean, I mean. It's it's not bad. It's decent. Like, it's, it's yeah. It's decent. It's decent at the end of the it's day. It's decent. Like, yeah. I'm not no Kendrick. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I I said in my last podcast that I actually contacted Kendrick when he was in Ghana. I went to one of his shoes and I showed him some of my music, my mixtapes. Right. Yeah. I showed him some of my mixtapes, but he said it was fire. He 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 right. really really liked it. And he tried to sign me that day, and I told him that I have school, so I can't <laughs> really really do that but i appreciated the offer <laughs> so, that was funny <laughs> i'm being so serious bro like i'm being so forever like i'm being so forever like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 okay 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 Okay, 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 okay. I mean, so okay, right. okay, 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 okay. You know what? Okay, you know what? 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 This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. All right. We 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 are we are so past time. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are sir. so so past time. Mm. So right now, I have to I have to end off with this last segment mm. before we end things off. Mm. All right. Yes, sir. So basically, what happens now is that I've been trying to do this segment for a while, mm. where it's like the previous guest will ask a question to the next guest and okay. you ask a question to the next guest. Okay. Keep in mind, I don't know who the next is going to be. You don't know who the next is going to okay. be. Okay. So they're just asking a random question. Okay. So our previous guest was Stay By Plan and they, told, and they asked two questions because there are two. Mm. So you have to answer the two questions. Each other you have. Wow. <laughs> and these questions, let me tell you, based off of the conversation that we had, by the way, if you haven't seen that episode, go and check it out because bro, that episode it was deep. Like when I say it was deep, but it was deep. Like, hey, serious. Deep. And so in line with the conversation that we had, this is the first question. Do you think that there is a thin line between good and evil and why? Yeah. There's a really thin line a lot of the time. Um I think it comes down to personal some of it is personal interpretation. Because even if we both tell ourselves we have similar frameworks for evaluating like say maybe we're both christian right Mm -hmm. (coughs) just because we're from different backgrounds even though we're both christian and we think we're analyzing something in a christian like context just because we're from different backgrounds we might think we might come to different conclusions of whether something is good or evil okay so um let me say Let me say, what's a really good example for this? Um, hmm. Say, even bro, LGBTQ is a, is a huge issue, right? We can both call ourselves Baptist Christians, but if I'm raised in the States and I have more exposure to something, it's not necessarily because of the exposure, but it's more likely that I'm going to be more accepting of them than a similar Baptist Christian who's li- who's lived in a very, you know, homophobic area and they don't like those people. Um, you don't have to morally think they're correct. It's up to, but we can both think that they're like sort of, no, we don't have to think that they're like wrong, correct or wrong according to like Christian law. Like we can both understand that technically they are not Christian, like necessarily, but come to different moral conclusions about like should we love them or should we accept them so right in the end of the day i feel like it's a very thin line a lot of the time and what it comes down to is like discernment and like subjectivity really okay 
for sure that's a very very good answer i mean i wasn't even expecting that i was like i didn't even know how to answer that question i can't remember, so <laughs> you did you did very well with that bro and then the next question <laughs> this one if you thought that question was something this next question is damn hey serious You're giving me these questions hey bro <clears throat> okay the I question is musical like <laughs> <laughs> not philosophy like i don't know what you're expecting but you're asking but you're asking the questions but you're really asking you're really giving you're really proving they're smart like the real smart i'm <laughs> 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 yeah, really proving it uh, so this is the next question if you could choose when you want to die and what you would have wanted to accomplish by then, what would it be? Hmm. Hmm. So, um, um, you know, I, I think what's most important to accomplish isn't necessarily any any tangible goal it's more just fulfillment and satisfaction with life the day i accomplished that i know that even though i didn't set out to complete everything i wanted to do i'm fulfilled with how far i've come and then i can die in peace so if i could choose when i would die um it would be i'm i'm sort of going through that journey and i'm trying to find you know fulfillment in what i'm doing regardless of whether like i meet the exact goals that i wanted to to meet you know going through that process of like even though i didn't get there and maybe i made a few failures i'm fulfilled and i'm satisfied with my life because i learned so much and i grew as a human being if you can get to that stage you can die peacefully well that's a very good answer bro Charlie, yeah bro, real smart real smart oh, Charlie, real smart is real smart don't guess it don't this guess is, it this is gone so don't guess it now it's time for you to ask your question to the next My guest. My question to the next guest. Yes. Um. Wow. Um. Putting me on the spot, like yeah, damn. But anyway, <laughs> I think um I can ask. What's your system for putting your creativity to use? I don't want to know this from the ex- I don't want to hear production knowledge or art knowledge. Just your general thinking about how creativity occurs. It can be in um writing copyright law or it can be in negotiating trade deals or it can be in making furniture or it can be in anything. I just want to know what's your general process behind um making any endeavor you do creative i think that's the question well that's such a like proper question like bro this guy gets some serious oh. bars on bars oh. Oh. is oh. wow oh. bro hello yo oh. i'm sorry wait, this whole interview i've been calling you rs 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 what's your real name <laughs> kevin <laughs> kevin <laughs> but i've been calling this brother rs rs ah! rs i didn't even know that guy's real name yo <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you know those like the tiktoks where they're like yo what's your name like um um puppy dogs with the money and like what's your name um jonathan like <laughs> that's that's this like that's, exactly that's right. literally this <laughs> i'm like bro ah, i'm like ah, nah, this is holding, i don't even know your name yes you. so kevin yeah. for those who are looking to get in contact with you for those who are really messing with what you're doing and say you want to support you how do they do that dm me um on insta on snap Add me on Snap or um, even on TikTok, like everywhere. It's all RS Real Smarts everywhere, which is RS Real yeah. Smarts for yeah. sure, for sure, RS for sure, Real for sure. Smart. And Charlie, if you guys yeah. are messing with the boy, you're messing with his channel, you're messing with what I'm doing here, we are on a mission. And without you, this will not be possible. So I thank you to everybody who has joined, and I thank you to everybody who is joining. Thank and you. bro, we are gonna change the world so. one episode at a time. Yeah. So. And if you're also messing with the book. You can pick out a book. Oh, yo, I yesterday I went to Medimart and I went to the Action Chapel bookstore and I saw both of these books, both of the books Tough. on the shelf Tough. in the both places. I'm like, yes, that's crazy. It's there. Yeah. So, yo, if you want to pick out the book physically, you don't, you can't order it. Medimart's Pharmacy, if you're in Ghana, it's in Spintex. Go Tough. there, pick up the book. Take a picture with it and text me like you bought it from there and bro, I'll shout you out, no cap. And also the same thing for action. If you go to the action shop with the main the headquarters, the cathedral, you go to the bookstore there, you can get the book. Yo, this podcast has been intriguing. It has been different. It has been 
<laughs> I didn't even know how this podcast would go. <laughs> like, let me tell you something, bro. It's God. Like, honestly, honestly speaking, it's God. And, bro, I hope, I hope, I hope that you've enjoyed every single thing that's gone on in this podcast. Subscribe for more. Text me if you are messing with, like, you know, the show and you want to see some other people on the show as well. And without further ado, I believe in you. We believe in you. Go and make the world a better place. Don't just live life, but thrive. That's it, bro. We All done. Right, let's we go. Done. We done with the podcast. Solid. We done. We done, Solid buddy. <laughs> this is this is gonna be a serious podcast, bro. Yeah, you got it.